Countless generations of mariners braved the perils of the sea with only their shipmates for company. But thousands of years of isolation changed in just a few short decades, when in 1897 the first radio communication was sent over water across the Bristol Channel. This revolutionary form of communication used a mysterious new type of wave. In the early years of the 19th century, people like Michael Faraday and Joseph Henry were doing experiments with electricity and magnetism and showed that the two were linked. Then in the 1870s, a Scottish scientist, James Clark Maxwell, showed that they were really just two parts of the same thing. And he showed that electromagnetic waves could exist, transporting energy from place to place via electric and magnetic fields. It was only after his death that Heinrich Hertz produced these radio waves, and not until the 1890s that Marconi showed there was a real use for them. And indeed, radio waves are now the basis of our whole communications industry. Radio seemed like magic. It could send messages fantastic distances between continents and beyond. To do that, radio waves must obviously be very different to sound waves. I mean, I can't shout to America from here, but I could send a radio message. A message that would be carried by electromagnetic waves. There's a link between electricity and magnetism. In fact, a changing electric field generates a magnetic field, and a changing magnetic field generates an electric field. And that's what an electromagnetic wave is. It's a self-propagating, changing electric and magnetic field. Now, whereas a sound wave is longitudinal in that the oscillation is in the same direction that the wave travels, an electromagnetic wave is a transverse wave. The oscillation is in one direction, but the wave travels in a perpendicular direction to that. And that's rather more like these water waves. In an electromagnetic wave, the electric and magnetic fields vary together, oscillate up and down in sympathy. You can't see it, but energy passes from the electric field to the magnetic field and back again. A radio transmitter sends out oscillating electromagnetic energy into space, like the ripples on a pond or the waves on the sea. The energy in a water wave can travel across the oceans. Well, the same is true of an electromagnetic radio wave, but it can also travel out across space. Although electromagnetic waves travel in a similar way to other waves, like sound waves or water waves, there is one important difference. Now, water waves require a medium to travel, that's the water. Sound waves also require a medium, like air. But electromagnetic waves don't require a medium. They can travel through empty space, through a vacuum. And that's why we were able to send and receive radio messages to astronauts on the moon. For Marconi, getting a message across the Atlantic was the equivalent of talking to the moon. His transmitter was set up down the coast here in Cornwall at a place called Poldhu. 2,170 miles away on the other side of the Atlantic, Marconi's makeshift receiving aerial was a cable held aloft by a kite. Despite a howling gale, he managed to get it 100 metres into the air. And to everyone's astonishment, except Marconi's, it worked. England spoke to America wireless for the first time on the 12th of December, 1901. And the rest is history. There was a strong push to get radio at sea because of the total isolation of ships. It was probably more the merchants and the owners who wanted it than the captains, although there was obviously many reasons why a radio would be useful when you're at sea, uh, in emergencies, and etc. But many captains resented their loss of independence. The moment radios were effectively available, then the owners could issue commands at any time of the night or day and tell the skipper what to do. But it also meant that wives at home could listen in for the first time to the messages their husbands were sending. I've got it fixed up in the kitchen and I can listen to all the gossip. He'll even say to his friends sometimes, can't say a lot today because I think we've got ears. <laughs> and, uh, but on the whole, it's, it's, it's nice to actually listen to, even if it's the other fishermen and not, not Neil, that I can hear. It makes you feel closer than you perhaps were before. Thank you.